Hi Jewels, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jewel Ivy and I'm the owner of Jewel Ivy The Clean Brand. And here on my YouTube channel, I make videos on fashion, sewing, and self-care. So if any of those interest you, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel and subscribe. For today's YouTube sewing tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this dress that I'm wearing. It is a cami slip dress and it's a maxi dress so it's super cute and comfy. I love it so much and I also dyed the end of this dress like an ombre effect and I did some block printing. If you guys want a full tutorial on how I do my block printing and how I cure it, I'll have that link down below in the description box because I went in depth in another video. But yeah, that is what we're getting into today. I'm so excited. I love this dress so much. It's so beautiful. I love these flowers. They're my favorite thing in the whole world. But yeah, if you guys want to know how to make this dress, just keep watching. So I'm starting off with my basic knit dress block to my measurements. And I'm going to go ahead and mark a line that is 10 inches up from my waist. And then I'm going to go ahead and square that line. Then I'm going to take a camisole that I love the fit of and fold that in half and line it up evenly with the edge of my dress block. And I'm going to make sure that the top of my cami is about a fourth of an inch above that line that we squared earlier. Now I'm going to trace all around my tank top until I get to the bottom. Then I will set that to the side. And now I'm going to extend my neckline out by an inch so I'll take my original strap line and move that out an inch and connect my new strap lines to the armhole and the neckline. Now to make my dress more fitted I'm going to start tapering it in starting at the hip and go all the way down to the knee. So at the knee I'll taper it in at a full inch and at the hips I'll start tapering in at about a fourth of an inch. Now that my front is complete, it is now time to move on to the back piece. For my back piece, I'm going to square a line at the bottom of the armhole and I'm going to line up my tank top with that line and I'm going to trace on the outside of my tank top until I get to the bottom of it. Then I'm going to taper in my dress the same way I did the front. Now I'm going to take my front pattern piece and line it up with the back pattern piece to make sure that everything is even and all the markings line up with each other. Now that my front and back pieces are finished, all I have to do is cut out my fabric and to make my dress full length, I just cut down from the knees um, freehand just so I'm not wasting more paper for my pattern. For my fabric, I'm using this red jersey knit and to dye it on the ends, I'm using my all-purpose writ dye in black and I'm just going to stir that in a pot and follow the directions on the bottle and I'm just going to dip my fabric in and out, in and out and kind of hold the bottom in a bit longer so it holds more of the color and is darker and I won't dip in the top as much so the color is not as opaque. And this is what the fabric looks like. I really love it. The reason why I dyed the fabric first before I cut it is because I had a different design originally, but I ended up changing the design last minute, but it still came out really cute. To cut out my fabric, I cut a front and a back main piece on the fold and a front and a back lining, and I mark my hip lines so I know where to line up both of the pattern pieces. And because I didn't have enough fabric, I didn't cut a full lining, but I recommend cutting your lining to at least above your knees. To sew my main dress, I'm going to place the front and back pieces right sides together, lining up the notches that I made and pinning along each side and I'm going to search that with my serger at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm also going to go ahead and repeat those steps to my lining pieces. Once I have my lining piece sewed together, I'm going to go ahead and finish the bottom edge with my serger and I'm going to place my lining inside of my main piece with right sides together and I'm going to pin and sew all along the top edge. Once I have that all sewn together, I'm going to set that to the side and start working on my straps. 
I cut two 20 inch long strips that are about one inch wide and I cut this extra piece because I originally had my straps be adjustable but in the end I just had them be regular non-adjustable straps and those fit a lot better. Now I'm going to take my two straps and feed them in to my strap holes and then I will sew them with a straight stitch using my regular sewing machine. Now that I've sewed my straps, I'm just going to pull everything to the right side. Here is where I made adjustable straps, but I ended up just doing non-adjustable straps. So try your dress on and fit your straps all the way to the back to the exact fit that you like and then just sew and cut it from there. Once I have my straps attached, I'm going to go ahead and give everything a nice press. Once everything is pressed, I'm going to go ahead and hem my dress. So I'm going to search the bottom edge and then take it to my sewing machine, fold it up about a half of an inch and sew with a straight stitch. This is what my dress is looking like so far and you can stop here, but I'm going to take it one step further and do some block printing. So let's get into that. Okay, Jules, that is the end of today's YouTube sewing tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And if you did, feel free to like and leave a comment below on any video ideas that you want to see me do in the future. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll catch you on my next one. Peace.